everybody. I'm pretty excited because I just recently got a whole bunch of stuff in the mail. I'm recording on one, I've got a microphone going, I've got all kinds of stuff going on, but in front of me I've got two long brown and white boxes um, and you guys know what's inside those. Good stuff. Uh, I've also got I've been wanting to try the uh, pull through with my neck here. Got some valve stall for cleaning. Uh, lead remover. Won't need that today. I shouldn't. And while I was down DBR, I won myself a little Holland uh, scope level. So, this guy here, um, as you can probably tell what brand it is, this is going to come later on. But, but this is what this video is about. This is the new Diana Stealth AM03. Uh, while I was down at Extreme Bench Rest, I picked one up and I've been excited about opening it up, getting it sorted out, and getting to shooting it because as you guys know, I'm a PCP guy. I'm really, I don't, I don't shoot springers. And I was just about to pull the trigger on a R95 22 cal and the Diana came out. So I just kind of waited to see what the reviews would be out there before I decided to pull the trigger. And from what I saw on uh, AEAC and on the forums, the Stealth looks like it's doing a really good job. And some of the other features I liked about it were it comes with a scope, the one package comes with a scope, and then the shock absorbing um, scope mount. Uh, when I was down at Extreme bench rest. I was able to shoot a Diana. I really like the way it shoots, nice and smooth. And I was also able to shoot a uh, R95, which I felt was just very, uh, very rough. I mean, it really, it really just hammered you when that spring went off. So I made the decision then to stick with the Diana. I like the look. I like, well, I like everything about it so far. But this one's mine, and I'm gonna get to opening it. So like I said, I got the package deal. Comes with a nice case. Eh, directions. Comes with the bullseye mount, ZR mount. This is the shock absorbing mount. I like that. And comes with a scope. One thing that struck me right away about the Diana Stealth was the stock. I like the color. I like the fact that they put the rubber grips in here. Um, I like the cheek rest and I just like the how the whole gun just has a very nice look to it and it really was appealing to me. One thing I was nervous about with the bullseye mount was the scope moving. Since this whole thing moves every time you shoot, it, are you going to lose your point of your zero basically on every shot? And I was a little nervous about that and in you know shaking it around against these bars it really doesn't move but I don't care necessarily if it moves during the shot because the shots already out of the rifle and now we're just in recoil what I did want to know is what I did find out though is it's got this little tapered bolt up here in the front and every time that has a recess right in here so every time this comes back it's basically forcing the gun the mount to go right back to zero which is pretty cool, I think. Well guys, I've got the rifle all set up. I've cleaned the barrel. I uh, got my scope mounted, my mount mounted, and everything's leveled. And I just zeroed in at uh, 50 yards. And one of the things I want to mention is uh, this is pretty stiff. I don't want to put a number on how many pounds you're pulling with, but it is pretty stiff. Um, the only Springer, other Springer that I've owned was a, uh, Airhawk Elite, and uh, it was not as strong as, of a pull as this one is. Um, so be prepared for that if this is a gun you're thinking about. Uh, safety kicks on automatically. The nice thing is you can just slide your thumb right up there and kick it off. Yep, she's sighted. <laughs> But wow, um, I forgot how much springers uh, kick on you. And this was a bit of a shock first, uh, first round through. I was, uh, I was jolted. <laughs> but 
but it's a smooth type of kick. It's a very, um, it's more of like a, a rapid push than a, than a slam. Okay, Diana, fix this. This ain't no good. <laughs> I'm leaving it out. I love how easy that safety is. I mean, you just flick it and it goes off. I've had other ones where you really have to push. And it's really annoying having to do that. This, if you forget, it's just, you can just flick it. And it's very light pressure to get it to turn off. Interesting note, I had bottomed out on this and the screw was just continuously turning. So this kind of, that's not really going to work very well for 100 yards. It's going to be really difficult. Um, and even at 50 yards, you're almost at, what, the bottom of the scope um, already. So I'm way far away from optical zero. I'd like to see Bullseye come out with this same mount, except give us a little tilt. You know, give us a little up tilt in the back, a little compensating tilt. For guys that are shooting Springer and long range. If you notice, this has a long pull, and with the safety engaged, you know it right away that you forgot it. You only come back, what's that, three eighths or so, and it's and you feel that resistance, and it reminds you, oh yeah, I gotta turn my silly safety off. I mean my safety off. I didn't say silly, did I? Well, I can hit a golf ball at 50 yards. <laughs> now, if I can just double that, I'll be doing all right. I came off from shooting, I just moved out to 100 yards, and I noticed my cheek rest was a little sideways. Well, that's not right, so I took it out. It's only one post. The other post has fallen out. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned, but Springers are violent, so <laughs> this might be something you watch out for if you get one of these with an adjustable cheek rest. Your uh, cheek rest may <laughs> I may have to use some glue on that. <laughs> it's not the end of the world. Nothing broke. I mean, whatever. <laughs> Stuff happens. It's just a pressure fit in there, but I was wondering why every once in a while I'd be like, Where's the scope at? <laughs> oh well, 100 yards, I think I found it now. It's, gosh, that's a lot of drop. It's gonna be tough. Okay guys, so I just shot the heck out of my Diana Stealth. This is again the first Springer I've shot in about 10 years. Uh, a couple of things, scope's nice. I prefer a mill dot scope, so I'll probably change this out. And the clicks, when you click, it's just kind of a gritty, but it comes with a scope. And it's a nice clear scope, and it does a good job. Uh, let's see, well, what do you go down to anyway? Oh, goes down to probably less than 10 yards. I mean, I've got a lot, this is how much extra I've got after 10 yards so that might be might be seven and a half yards or so to a well it's to infinity oh it's to infinity and beyond <laughs> um, very nice rifle um, 
and I would recommend it. Now, while I was shooting, I, I did take off the LDC because I was chasing my POI. Now, I'm doing two videos at once today. The other one is the Air Gun Depot Challenge. Using a Springer, shoot a golf ball, exploding golf ball at 100 yards. I just got it. Wow, that's difficult. You Springer guys, I give a lot of, tip my hat to you guys. So I changed out my moderator and put on a uh, Donnie FL Sumo. And I think it might have helped. Because I noticed I was kind of chasing, chasing, and then all of a sudden I put on the Donnie and it was starting, not, I wouldn't say stacking them. Maybe a better shooter, a better Springer shooter would stack them, but um, it definitely made a difference. Uh, made a huge difference in the, um, in the trajectory. I was shooting about six feet high uh, at 100 yards, and the way I had my scope set. And then I put on the Donnie, and all of a sudden my, my bullets went way up. So this is a great gun. I like how it, I like the recoil. Obviously, I like the mounts. And the whole package comes together very nicely in a sweet little case. Um, downsides, let's see. Just this is very stiff. You're pushing on a gas piston there, and it's very stiff. So if you're thinking about this for a young, uh, for a young child coming up, you know, um, see if you can get your hands on one and see if he can give that thing a pull. Now that might be a way to stop. Your child from shooting a rifle when you're not there. Um, the bottom plug on the grip here fell out. It fell out twice. It's to me it's not a big deal a dab of hot glue or something and I can have that in there so it stays in there for good. Well guys I shot this over the chronograph. 40 shots got me an average of 503.4 feet per second. And that's shooting JSP exact 18 grains. I was surprised that, that uh, it was only shooting at 500. I thought it was shooting a little bit faster than that. But um, standard deviation was 5.5. Very nice. Uh, let's see, a low 481 and a high of 512 makes an extreme spread of 31. How many shots per fill? <laughs> it's a Springer. Infinite. <laughs> One more thing I figured out is that the trigger is adjustable. These two little holes right here are for adjusting spring uh, trigger pull and trigger weight. I haven't messed with that yet, but I do plan to do that in the future. To me, it, it was a nice trigger. Like I said, the travel here is very long when it's cocked. It's just very long travel, um, and I wish I could move that trigger back a little bit. But Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I certainly enjoyed making it for you today. Take a look at the, the Diana. It's really a sweetheart rifle. And happy shooting.